uh, earnings season right now. And Snap actually posted just outstanding numbers on, on pretty much every metric uh, last week when, when they reported. Stock was up nearly 25% the next day. Um, but I think that's, it's one of the names we haven't really spoken about a whole lot publicly, but it is in the fund. Uh, and we, we've done well with that position, certainly after that earnings report. Um, what was what was kind of your your thought on that that report and kind of where Snap is right now, um, especially as it relates to a lot of the the AR you know kind of things that they're focusing on right now? Yeah, I mean Snap has been one of those companies um, that uh, just to me seems like it could be Facebook 2.0 in some ways, and you know mm -hmm. we remember facebook when it first went public it was sort of a disaster and it kind of languished for a year or so and i remember buying you know in 2012 or 13 i bought like a bunch of call options in facebook or 14 maybe but it just went way up and i timed it just right and, and i remember the stock valuation went from like what was it like 30 billion or 50 billion up to like you know it was like 40 or 50 or 60 dollars a share but then it went up to like um, I think I got the options at $30 a share, but then the stock went up to like 200 plus by the time I kind of got out or whatever. And I think I exercised the options to shares and held them on margin and sold it like year, a couple of years later for a big return. But it was just kind of a revaluation of Facebook once they kind of turned mm -hmm. on their advertising revenue, like proper way. And I feel like Snapchat could be like 2.0 of that in a way, like a better version, like kind of like Facebook was a reiteration of MySpace. Maybe Snapchat could be like a reiteration of Instagram and Facebook kind of combined in some ways. Um, yeah, it, it just seems like the people that use Snapchat, a lot of them love it. Even if some people kind of graduate from Snapchat as they get older, I still think there's enough incoming people and it's a good age demographic and enough people stick with it where it could really have some lasting um, benefits or lasting, um, uh, you know, customers that stick with it for a long time. Just like Facebook, a lot of us signed off of Facebook and never use it, but there's still a lot of people that still use it, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Instagram is really the big yeah. thing of Facebook, <clears throat> I think we all, but Snapchat's kind of like that. It, it, it just seems, I've kind of experimented and played with it myself. I don't fully understand the product. I need to get more into the product of Snapchat myself, uh, to be honest, but a lot of people I highly respect in that kind of like early adopter tech space love mm -hmm. what Snapchat's doing. And uh, I kind of, from a conceptual yeah. viewpoint, can see it materializing into being much more, especially with the founder. I'm very fond of uh, of him. I think he's very important. Yeah, and, and from a valuation perspective too. I mean, one of the I think really surprising things this quarter was just you know how strong their margins were. They they re really were able to monetize their users in a way that you know I remember when Facebook was going through you know the, the switch to mobile uh, as a primary means. They really struggled with how to kind of monetize their their user base. Uh, but, you know, Snapchat right now, um, they, they released some stats. They've got 200 million daily users of their augmented reality products. Um, and and they're, they're monetizing them like crazy. Um, they're, they're keeping their costs in check. So, so what you're getting is just, you know, this kind of uh, margin machine, this, this cash cow machine. Um, and then on top of that, I think they, they really are just one of the leaders in this emerging space. I mean, they, they talked a lot on the earnings call about uh, how they're, they're working with their retail partners um, who are really struggling with, you know, store closures and, and a lot of the pandemic related, you know, just drop in, in foot traffic um, where retailers would, you know, get a lot of their, their sales. And so they're, they're needing to find, you know, kind of creative ways uh, to enhance that user experience in order to to drive uh, sales on their channel. So they're, they're talking a lot about, you know, using AR to, to you know, uh, represent the way an individual shirt will look on you uh, and, and to really tailor the individual uh, user experience uh, in a way that, you know, is, is I, I think going to be highly uh, valuable to society overall and, and to the economy. So I think they really are in, in kind of pole position to take advantage of kind of this intersection of, you know, uh, on, increased online shopping, of course, but, you know, kind of the next generation of that where it's more individualized, uh, but it's also, you um, improved by like augmented reality where you, instead of just you know models wearing something you're like i i hope that looks good on me like it does on that yeah. model instead yeah. you're going to be able to say oh yeah here's how it would look on me and here's how you know the cloth would actually hang on my shoulders and that sort of thing They're, they've still got some work to do i think to really nail that down but um i don't see anybody out there who's who's kind of going after that uh, as aggressively as snapchat is and i'm really excited to see how it pans out 
Yeah, we talk a lot about the metaverse and a lot of people do. It's a key word thrown around. And I feel like if you had a word called augment verse, Snapchat would be like <laughs> the head of that. You know, I think there's no one, you know, Instagram has some filters and things, but I think Snapchat's, you know, way ahead of them. And uh, it's going to be fascinating to see, you know, how they progress from here. And, and I think also they're building kind of a competitor to TikTok out in some of their functionality. You know, I listened to their earnings call and it just, it sounds to me like, I don't see why they couldn't do what ByteDance is doing with TikTok. You know, I think they're already starting mm -hmm. to kind of build that out and they have a huge user base to kind of go with. And I guess there's some, you know, proprietary algorithms ByteDance has built up that everyone values that, you know, zeroes in on what each individual person really wants to watch, suppose, you know, somehow, but maybe that could be easily commoditized over to Snapchat's uh, user base too. Right. So I don't know enough about that particular, um, algorithm stuff that ByteDance is working on and why, why Snapchat couldn't do it, but it seems like a question worth asking or, or wondering and the upside potential for Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think they're, they they said all the right things on, on top of having kind of you know, blowout numbers. So it, I, I'm, I'm yeah. certainly excited to see kind of where they go from here, but um, you know, and it, also it another, seems like they're, one, they're really well positioned. One last thing on that, Snapchat's a US company, right? ByteDance is Chinese and I know like, you know, in the last administration, it was like kind of a big deal. It almost got shut down. Right. And so what if <laughs> right, that yeah. kind of political environment comes back, even with the current administration, you know, it could easily happen if somehow China and the U.S. seem to be, you know, at each other's heels on things, then maybe ByteDance gets shut down for real. And Snapchat's already got a formidable competitor of everyone to transition to who's used to using TikTok. Yeah. So in the U.S., and, that could happen. Yeah, Snapchat, they, they really, they're they're highly successful here in North America. If you kind of look at their, their geographical statistics, they're, you know, far and away that their largest market is, is in North America. So, you know, if, if that, that sort of scenario were to pan out where, you know, there was, you know, kind of more nationalism maybe on both sides and, and you know, yeah. some sort of restrictions come in, I think, uh, Snapchat would be kind of the, the natural winner, you know, here in, in the U.S. Uh, but if that doesn't happen at the same time, then I think they, they do have room to ex expand, uh, you know, to Asia, to Europe and, and elsewhere. So yeah, e either way you cut it, I think I think they're they're well positioned to win. Yeah.